This is, everybody's got something to deal with. I'm a fucking lunatic with my temper. This is something I have to deal with. I do. You know, you, you can't fucking stop eating pork chops. That's something you have to fucking deal with. I don't have to completely rewire myself. You know what it is? It's just a bunch of sixes pissed off that they're not getting treated like a 10. You know, at some point, you just got to acknowledge what you are. You're a six. I'm sorry. All right? Nobody jerks off to a six. That's the deal. Unless you work with her. If you work with her, you know? She's got that one outfit, you know, it just does something for you. You work in close quarters, so there's, you know what a shampoo smells like? There's an intimacy. There's an intimacy there. All right? Now, I don't know what women rub one out to, but I know it ain't me. All right? This is a fantasy. That's why I don't feel bad about it. trashing them. It's like, yeah, this is all coming from, I'm a strong five. All right? That's where I am. So I still feel like I'm punching up here. You know? Honestly, people, I'm a bald, red-headed male. You don't think there's a glass ceiling on the kinds of parts I can get in Hollywood? Really? Do you think I'm ever going to be the lead in a romantic comedy? That ain't happening. That's the thing. That's, it's show business. There's a million dollars on this film, okay? We're trying to make fucking money. You just want to show up with fucking crumbs on the side of your face? Show up in shape, looking as fuckable as possible, know your lines, ready to work. It's called being a professional, right? Dude, Ben Stiller had abs and meet the parents. There was no reason for him to do that. He just knew, I'm gonna take my fucking shirt off. I don't wanna get trashed. He was shredded. Yeah, go be a fucking postman. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. All right. No, you know what it is? This is just the ramblings of someone who's sliding into the back nine of his life, and I'm not understanding half the shit that's going on. You know? But you know one of the big things that really made me feel old was when McDonald's started making salads. <laughs> that literally ripped my heart out. I'm like, they're, they're doing what? what? Now they have wraps, and they're doing all of this shit. You know what it was? Was out of shape people complained to them. That you're like, oh, you don't have any healthy options. It's like, dude, this is McDonald's. This shit is poison. Who the fuck comes here to get in shape? Whenever I get McDonald's, I have a whole plan. At my age, I'm 48 years old. I know what I'm going to order. I'm going to go in there. It's going to taste great. 20 minutes later, I'm going to want to kill myself. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to the gym tomorrow. I'm going to the gym tomorrow. And no matter how much I say that, I woke up the demon in me. I woke up the demon and all that grease is just coursing through my veins. And no matter how much I want to go to the gym, there's going to be this other voice going, dude, get an Egg McMuffin. Go down there and get an Egg McMuffin. And I'm going to sit up like the Manchurian candidate. Okay, we're going to McDonald's. It's my in-shape voice is in the back going, no, what are we doing? Go to the gym. And I'm just going to drive right down, right? I know what it is. But somehow, out of shape people somehow got, that made them, they're the to fucking blame. They had to have more healthy shit because they're the reason why, how come they don't have to put a little kale in their ice cream? Why is that? Oh, because you're a couple of hippies, man, and you're like making ice cream. They're going after big bad McDonald's, you know? It's just, who the fuck goes to McDonald's to get in shape? And don't give me that horse shit that eating healthy is, 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 is expensive. It isn't. Go to a fucking supermarket. They're throwing the vegetables at you. Here's celery, get it the fuck out of here. 70 cents, 25 cents for a banana, whatever the fuck you want. Get it out of here before it goes bad. No, it's fucked up. They somehow convinced them that, that you know, McDonald's is the reason why I'm out of shape. I would have got a salad, but you didn't have the option. So I was like, well, I guess I got to get 52 Big Macs. Thanks a lot, McDonald's. It's like, dude, you're an adult. It's not their job to babysit you. They're a fucking business. If you order 50 sandwiches, they're gonna give it to you. It's your job to not do it, you fucking dope. Right? I know. Sorry. I know. Yeah. Dude, McDonald's, McDonald's exists for two reasons, okay? It's for drunk people and it's for children. All right? That's what this thing is. You know, you're in your car, your kids won't shut the hell up, you go to the drive-thru. You go to the drive-thru, you get a couple of poison burgers, you throw it down their throats, their little systems can't handle it. They start... They start nodding off. 
And you're up front, you're bigger, you can handle a bigger dose of poison, you know what I mean? Pop in your Death Leopard cassette, you have a little moment for yourself. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's for your kids, and it's for drunk people. Like, how many times have you driven out to a bar going, I'm just gonna have one, all of a sudden you had like 11, right? And you're hammered, and you're thinking, but you know, but you're responsible. You're drunk, but you're responsible. You're like, God damn it, I drove my car here tonight. God damn it, I'm driving it home, all right? I'm not gonna burden this place of business by taking up a parking space in this completely empty parking lot for the next six hours. I am not advocating drinking and driving, but I will tell you, there's nothing better than when all your friends and family know you're ham. It's incredible. Women are screaming, people tearing at your clothes. You feel like you're in the Beatles. Oh my God, no! Stop him! You're like, no autographs! I'm sorry, I have to go! I'll be back! Get him off me! And you, you get in the car, and everybody's screaming, get in the fucking car! You're fine, I had a car eight years, I know. I can almost see my house, just get in the fucking car. You gotta make the cops come. Get in the fucking car. I swear to God, just get in the fucking car. Oh, take your seatbelt off, you fucking Mary. I'm going right down the street, right? And then what happens? You get out on the road, you realize you're way more hammered than you thought. Who was always there for you? McDonald's with the drive-through. The 24-hour drive-through, you could just pull in and hide in plain sight, right? And that little sad traffic jam of divorcees, shut-ins, people who go to Comic-Con, right? You just pull in and just stop. You can take a little nap. It's like, damn, thank you, thank you, right? You pull around, that's what it was all about. And now all of a sudden, they're the reason the whole life. People weren't this fucking fat, right? It's not their fault, you can't pin it on them. But McDonald's fucked up. They fucked up because they gave in to out of shape people. And they said, all right, fine, fine, it's our fault. We'll start making salads. And then they got on their heels. They got on their heels, everybody sensed it, and now look at them, okay? Four or five years later, now they gotta make, they gotta make breakfast all day, right? Because <laughs> you know what happened? All the potheads showed up going, well, hey man, if you're gonna make him a salad, like, like what if I want like a breakfast thingy and it's like, it's not breakfast, like, you're gonna hook him up, but you're not gonna hook me up? That's, that's like food racism or something, man. I just, I just don't understand. They're like, fine, we'll start making, we'll make the breakfast. They just completely lost their way. I swear to God, dude, if I was running that corporation, this is what I would do. You know what I would do? I'd bring that clown back, all right? I'd bring the clown back, okay? And I, I just have that thing, just look right down the barrel of the camera, have a little bit of dry ice, in the background, he just come right in tight on his face. And he just looks right in the camera and just goes, look, if you can't get your fat ass down here by 10.30 in the morning, you're getting a burger. All right? The clown ain't finished! I'm not making pancakes at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because you did blow all night with your friends and you're just getting your shit together, all right? Make no mistake, this is a burger joint. It's always been a burger joint. We did that breakfast thing as a favor, you know? We were just trying to freak out IHOP. Ooh, ooh, we're doing it too! We're doing it too! Your own mother won't make your pancakes at three o'clock in the afternoon, okay? So get your fat ass or your drugged up ass down here before 10.30, we decide. It's our place, we tell you what the fuck we're making, all right? That's it. Take him out. And he pushes a kid on a swing. Something nice. So, anyways, by the time this special comes out, another election will have come and gone. And it's just, God knows who we picked. And it's another one. They're not going to fucking talk about anything. Oceans are dying. They just said the Great Barrier Reef is dead. You know, genetically altered food. There's too many fucking people. I don't even know what, they're just talking about a bunch of shit. You know? Bruce has to drop a deuce, where is he going to go? Which bathroom should this guy in? It's like, I don't give a shit. This guy has enough money to literally have a porta potty rickshaw running behind him. <laughs> a couple billion fucking people.
You never think about that shit? You know, they never talk to us about it. You know they talk about it behind closed doors, right? <laughs> Bunch of creepy dudes all sitting around some giant table, right? They probably talk about it then, just sitting down after like, I trust everyone had their fun. <laughs> Let's get down to the task at hand. <laughs> there are over 7.5 billion people on the planet. We're running out of fresh water. There won't be enough chicken to feed the others. Does anyone here any, have any suggestions on how to eliminate the pressures of the undesirables? <laughs> ah, yes, you. Number four. <laughs> you may speak. Well, you know, what are... What if we, like, slowly cooked them at the airport? You know? You know, just throwing it out there. Like, what if you had, like, a revolving door-looking thing? You made them take their shoes off, they got in, and they radiate them from head to toe. Once on the way out, once on the way back. Oh, yes, yes. I like that. I like the sound of that. And how would that work? Would you have it on low at first? Sear them like a tuna steak? They don't understand. You let the children go. We'll use them for slaves later, right? No old people, they'll die soon, just people in the prime of their life. And gradually over the years, you increase it. You increase it, they start frothing at the mouth. They don't recognize the children. The property comes back to us. Oh. I trust everyone at this table flies private. More. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Dude, my wife thinks I'm out of my mind because I think shit like that. But I think I'm right. Dude, I know they think about it. I know they think about it, because I think about it. Every time I land in a city and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm just driving down the street and I see all these, I'm in the middle of a fucking traffic jam. That inner Mussolini comes out of me, right? Like, what are all these people doing in my road? <laughs> they must be eliminated. <laughs> I don't know, like, how do you not fucking bring it up? Is it because it would freak everybody out? You know, that you have to start maybe taking some measures. Feel that, you feel that creepy bill? You, that's right, that's right, yeah. And what do you think, dude? You think you're gonna, you think you're in the fucking upper tier? You're in the, you're in the luxury boxes? Yeah, you spend a lot of time with yourself. You, you're doing a lot of nodding. I, I like what I think. I like what I think a lot. What I think is the way it should be. I understand what that's like. I live this fucking isolated life, man. I go on the road, I'm in green rooms, and I just fucking, you know, I'm just by myself all the time. You slowly go fucking crazy. I did a gig recently, I was in Ireland, and I was in the green room by myself, and I went to turn on the light. It was one of those pull switches, and it wound up around itself, looked like a little noose, and I immediately just thought, what if I just stuck my head in there and just... <laughs> and just turn the lights out, literally and figuratively was not thinking about killing myself at all the second I thought, oh, what if I just fucking did that, that? And then I looked in the mirror, I caught my eye, and we both laughed. <laughs> yeah, I had this wonderful little moment with myself. No words needed to be spoken, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I...